Tonight marks three weeks since three men were found dead in the backyard of a friend's home in Kansas City, days after going over there to watch a Kansas City Chiefs game. And tonight we're learning more about that friend who's at the center of the controversy, Jordan Willis, whose home they were visiting. News Nation obtaining this video of the night the bodies were found, two days after the friends went over there. You can see Willis in cuffs on the porch of the house. A neighbor shot the video on his cell phone. We now know Willis was uncuffed and allowed to go back inside. And police are not treating this as a homicide as of now. They're still saying no signs of foul play, which is infuriating family members of the victims. Jordan Willis is 38 years old a respected HIV scientist and researcher in the Kansas City area who works with the International AIDS Vaccine Initiative, Neutralizing Antibody Center, originally a Virginia native who received a PhD in chemical and physical biology from Vanderbilt in 2014. He also received an award in 2022 for his significant contributions to HIV vaccine development. After college, he spent close to 10 years in Nashville and San Diego doing his graduate and postdoctoral work before returning to Kansas City, where he reignited his friendship with the three men he knew from high school. And now people who know him are coming to his defense, a friend slamming speculation that Willis had anything to do with the deaths of his three friends, 37-year-old David Harrington, 38-year-old Ricky Johnson, and 36-year-old Clayton McGinney. Quote, he didn't get to say goodbye or go to their funerals due to the circumstances of these wild speculations and accusations. No one seems to be willing to wait for the results of the toxicology reports or wait for any other facts from the police department from a case that is still under investigation. Willis's family further took to his defense, his father issuing a statement claiming he would never in a million years do anything. These were all good friends of his. They were all people he went to school with. He took them to a football game the day before for the Chiefs. Willis's attorney, John Paserno, even saying he'd made plans with the men for a future date claiming he'd bought tickets for all of them to go to the next Chiefs game. He didn't want any harm to come to them. There was no ill will. News Nation correspondent Alex Capriello joins us now. He's been knocking on doors and speaking to neighbors in that area. Alex, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. So what are people saying about him? Yeah, it really depends on who you ask, Dan. If you speak to the neighbors here, uh, they'll tell you they just really don't know much about Jordan. Uh, from what I can tell, he really kept to himself, stayed in his house most of the time. Uh, a lot of dog walkers around here, for example. We know Jordan had two pit bulls, but he was never really seen walking his dog. So a lot of mystery about who this guy was. Now, speaking to both the family of the victims and also the friends that I've been able to connect with, uh, they tell me that Jordan did hang around with these guys uh, every once in a while, but he wasn't necessarily a part of the same crew of, of men that grew up together from high school and beyond. So uh, a lot of speculation about what his involvement was, just how tight he was with these guys, uh, but not really that much that we can glean from the neighborhood. Let me play a little bit of some of the family uh, reactions, who a lot of people are, are very angry with Jordan Willis. This is number five. Last time we saw him, they were leaving the house, but he didn't know that they had left, so... That doesn't make much sense. I think a lot of people know more than they're saying. You can't tell me he didn't know those flies were back there in the backyard. How do you not know there's three dead bodies in the back porch? It, you know, there's so many questions being asked about him. And, you know, I understand why his lawyer would probably be advising him to be careful about exactly what he says and wait for the toxicology reports. But, you know, if the story right. is exactly as he says it, right, that... He was just in his house, and two days later, uh, someone else finds these bodies in his backyard, and he had no idea. You would think that he really might want to come out himself and, and say something like that. Do we have any indication that he might speak out publicly? Yeah, look, I tried getting in contact with his uh, actual attorney, trying to get just the latest on Jordan, not to mention his story, but also how he's feeling with all this stuff uh, going on surrounding him. Uh, the lawyer's not talking, uh, not until a toxicology report comes out. And really, that was uh, the final word that I got from him. But I think you're right. I think a lot of people are expecting him to, uh, you know, shout from the rooftops his innocence or just what he was actually going through for the, those 48 hours. Because I'll tell you, neighbors here are skeptical about that story. They 
find it hard to believe. And just from what I could tell with my own eyes looking at the backyard, uh, a lot of windows back there uh, leading out to the patio and to the chair where we know David Harrington was found sitting upright, frozen to death. Uh, so it feels really hard to believe that someone could actually be there for two full days and not see three friends in the backyard. But that's the story that we have right now. That's the story we have to go with until we know something further. Of course, everyone's just waiting on those toxicology reports, of course. Well, you mentioned John Paserno, who was on this show, his attorney, who said that Willis had been asleep on the couch next to a loud fan for two days. He was also wearing noise-canceling headphones when concerned family members came calling, um, which, you know, seems to address all the questions about why he wasn't answering the door, et cetera. But, right. you know, again, the, uh, the questions continue, and I think you point out about exactly how one of the bodies was found, which, again, leads to more questions. So we'll wait on the toxicology reports. I know everyone's saying that they believe that's going to answer a lot of questions. It will answer some. I'm not convinced it's going to answer all the questions. So we shall see. Alex, thanks very much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.